Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to show you how to make this crochet water balloon. These are super handy for several reasons. The first reason is that they are reusable. So you use them, then afterwards you let them dry out in the sun, or if they got really dirty, you can throw them in the wash, and then put them away for next time. Another great thing is that it saves you a lot of time. You don't have to spend time cleaning up the water balloons afterwards, and you don't have to spend time beforehand filling them up. Because as you can see, there are little holes in this, so these water balloons are not meant to be filled with water. Instead, they are made with super absorbent yarn. Now the yarn that I found for this, I found at Hobby Lobby, and it's actually their brand, Yarn Bee, and it's the Cozy Occasion yarn. So the only other yarn that I've found so far that seems to be as absorbent is the Bernat Blanket Yarns, and that's actually the yarn that I would recommend for this project only because of the color options. Normally, I love Hobby Lobby's color options. Um, they're really beautiful, rustic colors. But for this particular project, I think it's more fun to have those bright, like, crayon Lego colors. The bright red, the bright yellow, bright orange. Burnett Blanket Yarns does have a bright line. So this yarn, as well as I believe the Burnett Blanket Yarns, does call for an 8mm hook, but we are not going to use that size. We're going to use a 9mm hook. I think it's just a little easier to work with. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we are going to start off um, just chaining three. Now you could do a magic ring. I normally would recommend that when working in rounds, but it's so annoying with this yarn. Um, you can give it a try and see what you prefer, but I'm just going to show you um, chaining three, and then we're going to slip stitch into the first chain. Then we are just going to work our stitches in the center of that circle that we just made. If you can find it. This yarn's kind of hard to see. Okay, so we're going to chain two, and for the sake of this pattern, that will not count as a stitch. We are going to do eight double crochets. So not counting the chain two we just did, do eight double crochets into the center of that ring, whether you're using a magic circle or the chain three the method that I just used. And you could just crochet around your tail and then at the end, if there's still some peeking through, you can trim that. Okay, so just count, make sure. Getting the right amount, looks like we need one more. Okay, and once you've done that, we're just going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet. So remember, ignore that chain two space that we did. So find the eighth, there it is. That's where we're going to slip stitch into. Okay, and chain two again. And remember, this does not count as a stitch. Now on this row, we are doing an increase in each stitch. So you're going to do two double crochets into each stitch. And you can skip the stitch that you just slip stitched into. So you will end up with 16 double crochets. You're going to want to make sure to count your stitches, make sure you end up with the right number. Okay, so I'm on my last double crochet here, and then I am going to slip stitch into 
the first double crochet. All right, so this next row is super easy. You're just gonna chain two. And then we're going to do a double crochet into each stitch. And remember, we are not working into the one we just slip stitched into. So go to the next one, and you're going to work a double crochet, and then the next one a double crochet, and then keep doing that for the rest of the round. Make sure you have 16. Okay, so I'm about to do my last double crochet. Gonna make sure that I have the right number. Okay, 16. So there we go, so we're going to slip stitch into the top of that first one right there. All right. So for this next row, we're going to be doing decreases. So chain two, and there may be more than one way to do a decrease. I'll just show you how I do it. You just go like you're starting a regular double crochet you just only finish half of it. So you pull through two, and then you go to start another double crochet in the next, next stitch. This time you pull through three, and then you pull through the last two, finishing off that decrease. Okay, and then you're gonna do that seven more times, because you want to get it down to eight stitches. So you do eight decreases total. Okay, so we just have one more decrease left. And it's a little bit tricky to see just because the stitches are pulled so flat. So just make sure you count, make sure that you have eight stitches. Eight, okay, so we're good. Then you're going to slip stitch into that first, <clears throat> sorry, that first decrease right there. So slip stitch. Okay, and the next row is the same. So chain two, and we're going to be doing decreases, but this time we're only going to be doing four. Okay, once you're sure you have four decreases, then we're going to slip stitch into that first one. And it's kind of tricky because at this point, you've gotten it pretty small. Okay, 
Okay, so into the top of those four stitches, we're going to do single crochet. So just chain one and then do a single crochet, do two single crochets into each of those stitches. So you're going to end with eight stitches. This is what really gives it that um, cute little tied off look like a real water balloon. And again, it is a little bit hard to tell where you've finished. So just make sure you're counting. Although honestly, if you feel like it looks good, it doesn't matter because you're not gonna mess up future rows because this is the last row. But if you're like a perfectionist like me, you're gonna want to, to count, make sure you have eight. And if you do, like I do, yep, I've got eight. Um, then you are ready to cut your yarn and you're going to want to leave yourself a, a good amount left. Um, maybe 8 to 12 inches. So a good amount, but not like super long. You're going to want to grab your yarn needle. This is just how I like to do an invisible finish on the end here. So we're going to make it look like the stitches this just continue. Okay, so again, it's a little hard to see with this fuzzy yarn, but find your first single crochet. Ignore the slip stitch underneath, but find the first single crochet. And you're gonna wanna go under it. You can go from either direction, like I was showing you. Either one works. You're gonna go underneath that stitch and then you're going to go back into the stitch that your yarn tail was coming from. Again, I'm sorry, it's so hard to see. I hope that made sense. And that way, it just looks like it's continuous. This part is not essential, so you don't have to worry about it if it just seems to be overly complicated. So you're just going to put your thread your yarn just to the inside and kind of wrap it around where you feel like the uh, the tie of the balloon would naturally fall. Don't pull it too tight or you'll ruin that nice clean finish of the top. Just pull it tight enough so there's not loose thread. And just wrap it around a stitch somewhere and tie a knot around that. Okay. So at this point, you're just going to wrap the extra thread around. This is what really finishes it off and gives it that water balloon feel. So wrap it around as many times as you feel like it needs it. And if you have more yarn, you can wrap it more times. When you feel like it's done, just grab underneath one of those um, yarn layers and just and tie a knot. Now since this is when you're finishing off, I would probably tie two knots. Honestly, one probably will hold just fine, but I'm tying two. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then you're just gonna thread your yarn through the middle of the water balloon. And if it's longer than the water balloon, trim off the end. And just pull that nice and tight. We don't have to worry about threading the end in because it's just gonna hide inside the water balloon. It's not gonna be a problem. So there you go. It was super easy. It didn't take us very long at all. It looks super cute, especially if you find colors that you love. You can make as many as you want, do multiple colors, do all one color. This is the perfect crochet project if you're hoping to do a summer craft fair. I know sometimes it's harder to find things for, for summer than it is for winter. You can just crochet a little bag and sell a set, or it could be a really cute gift. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.